Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And um, thanks to someone in my comments a while back who suggested a cell phone uh, stand as a possible Blu-ray stand for those that are tired of holding Blu-rays, and I certainly am. Uh, so that's what this is, and I'm going to use it in just a second. Um, this episode, I'm talking about a new uh, double feature uh, film noir from the good folks at Flickr Alley uh, in conjunction with the Film Noir Foundation and UCLA. Uh, it is The Guilty and High Tide. Uh, these are two Poverty Row studio type budgeted films, both directed by uh, this gentleman by the name of John Reinhardt, who I hadn't heard of previous to this, and who um, uh, does a nice job with not a heck of a lot at all, actually. Uh, the first film, The Guilty, is um, based on a Cornell Woolrich story. Cornell Woolrich, uh, one of the great writers of stuff that was adapted into movies in the 50s, um, not the least of which was, uh, I believe, the story for Rear Window. Um, but yeah, just a really great writer, and this is a really interesting story about two war veterans. Uh, they are played by uh, Don Castle and Wally Cassell. And Don Castle is the, um, no, I'm sorry, that's not right. Yeah, no, that is. Oh, I was thinking of, um, that the star of this was an, another guy, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting that the, the actor that plays one of the folks in this movie, that's Don Castle, he's like, you can see him there on the cover. He's like a smaller, thinner Clark Gable type vibes, really. Uh, so it's interesting. But anyway, The Guilty is about two war vets who are living together and they are dealing with twin sisters played by Benita Granville, who was the f uh, one of the early Nancy Drews. She did a series of films as Nancy Drew and she's a little older here but um she plays twin sisters in this and there's some complications with the sisters and i'm not going to go too far into the plot because it's really more of one that's fun to watch and figure out but i guess based on this um it's uh working on only three sets with a shoestring budget reinhardt and director of photography henry sharp evoke the dreadful dead of night ambience uh that was woolrich's domain um and it says, thanks to the Film Noir Foundation, Guilty has been restored from a 35 millimeter nitrate composite fine grain master by UCLA Film and Television Archive is now prevented, presented in its world premiere edition. Uh, and High Tide was the second of two crime thrillers incidentally produced in 1947 by uh, Rather. Uh, that would be Jack Rather. And these were from Monogram Pictures. Um, I'll just show off my little stand here. <laughs> That's fun. Um, so yeah, High Tide is really interesting. Uh, I, I think that might be the one of the two that I preferred. Uh, the Guilty is very intriguing, and the plot was a little tricky. Like, I had to actually sort of back it up to get a sense of like, wait, did I miss something here? There's something happened, and I and I didn't fully catch it. So I was like, oh, okay, because I didn't see the ending of The Guilty coming. Um, now, High Tide is interesting, too, because it's, in this case, uh, we're back to uh, Don uh, Castle again. Uh, and this one, he stars with Lee Tracy, who's a favorite of mine, fast-talking actor from you know, the 1930s and 40s, and the two men are in a car crash wreck on the beach. And Don Castle's character 
uh, has a leg pinned under the car and can't get it loose. And Lee Tracy has a broken back and is stuck in the car itself. And the tide is rising and we know that their time is sort of limited. They're running out of time. And they sort of reflect on how they got there. And so the Don Castle character answered a telegram from Lee Tracy about a $10,000 life insurance policy. And he's sort of a private eye that works for the newspapers, I guess. And so it's one of those things where we start to flash back on um, the, you know, how he got there, that whole business. And I, I, I do think it's a fascinating story because Lee, Lee Tracy's working in a newspaper office, which I find to be uh, a great mainstay for him. Like he did several fast talking newspaper type characters, and I always have enjoyed that kind of thing from him. So, uh, so it's cool to see him back in that, um, you know, sort of milieu, if you will. So Lee Tracy is the hotshot city editor at a newspaper who likes to go after local criminals. Uh, we see him at the opening and he's basically just gotten a crook executed and is starting on another one that heads up some nearby gambling operations and has just stopped by the newspaper offices to chat uh, with Tracy's character and uh, the editor about laying him off kind of or else, you know, kind of thing. Like this this criminal is basically saying to the editor, you got to get this guy under control or you're going to have a problem. Um, and it sort of spins out from there. You know, the, the Don Castle character gets involved with the Lee Tracy character and the, these criminals. And I, I, again, I don't really want to go too deep into the plot stuff because it's fun to watch and I dug seeing how these unfolded. And so it was, it's a cool little, you know, double bill of noirs. And they're both, uh, the guilty is 71 minutes and high tide is 72 minutes. So they're really economical in terms of time. Uh, and they've got some really nice bonus features as is always the case with the, um, stuff from Flickr Alley. Uh, introduction to the Guilty and High Tide by author, film, film historian, and noir archaeologist Eddie Muller. Always wonderful. Jack Rather, uh, Legacy of Film and Friendship, a documentary by Stephen C. Smith and Alan K. Rohde, featuring interviews with Chris Rather and Gretchen Castle uh, Bernfeld. So that's wonderful. Uh, Nightmare, The Life and Films of Cornell Woolrich a documentary by Stephen C. Smith and Eddie Muller exploring the life and work of the author Cornell Woolrich featuring interviews with publisher Otto Penzler, writer Charles Arldahl, and film historian and biographer Alan K. Rohde. John Reinhardt Direction, Without Borders, uh, produced again by Stephen C. Smith and Alan K. Rohde featuring interviews with critic Dave Kerr, historian uh, Maria Elena De La Car Carreras, a uh, former child actor to Gordon Gebert and film historian K, K. Rohde himself. And then Lee Tracy, the fast, <laughs> fastest mouth in the West, a profile on the actor and writer by film historian Imogen Sarah Smith, who is also fantastic. Plus, you get audio commentaries by uh, Jake Herxon on The Guilty and Alan K. Rohde on High Tide and a souvenir booklet as well, which is pretty cool. Nice little booklet. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, this is just another great noir release from, uh, and they're both on uh, separate discs here. I mean, there's a DVD and a Blu-ray. They're on the same disc. They're short movies. But yeah, if you like these noirs that um, the folks over at Flick Reality have been doing, this is another great one, and I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, these are both just wonderful little discoveries for me. Very tight, you know, and well put together on, again, very limited resources. And I hadn't heard of either of them. So I kind of love that Flick Rally's become this source of discovery between those um, Spanish noirs and, and uh, just the general stuff they've been bringing out. Uh, they just really have brought to light some classic cinema that was totally off my radar. And so I've sort of come to them as now a reliable source for 
those kind of discoveries, which I'm always looking for. So well worth your time, the guilty and high tide for noir fans. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.